Welcome back to Plus Politics, and we are moving straight to Ondo State. As the Ondo State gubernatorial election draws nearer, violence has occurred as the candidate of the People's Democratic Party PDP, Eitai Ojegede SAN, and his campaign team are attacked. The PDP has now accused the APC of masterminding the attacks. It claimed that three vehicles were destroyed as five people were severely injured during what looked like an assassination attempt. Joining us to discuss this is still Evans Ufeli. Thank you once again for staying back. And uh, we are being joined by the Publicity Secretary of APC in Ondo State, Alex Kalejai. Good evening, Alex Kalejai. Good evening. Yeah, let me start with you, since you're in Ondo State, and uh, probably hear your own side of the story. Um, it might be easy for anyone to say that who else could be behind that attack, if not the ruling party, since that was from uh, the attack happened to the opposition party. What explanation do you have to make to Nigerians? Well, thank you. We are not unaware that if we are to have campaigns or rallies, the same local government same day, they are bound to be killed. Therefore, on the other day, the 16th of September 2020, PDP had no reason to be in a couple where we had planned our rally long before yesterday. To us, they were there to form a trouble. We were taken aback when we were informed that the PDP supporters had blocked the road. We leave the rest of the security agency to establish what actually transpired yesterday. And the same day, two of our members in the heart of Apure were attacked by PDP members. It is a record that we do not support, no support. Uh, uh, identify with anything capable of causing pain on the good people of one country. The cross of our policies is to ensure a peaceful and rank of free governorship election. We will continue as much as possible to ignore unprovoked attacks and speak the language of peace. Okay. We have also appealed to leaders of PDP to talk to their members, to talk to their supporters. The best way to Alex, gather the vote Alex, of the people. Alex, uh, we'll talk, to, we'll talk about the solution. Talk. Alex, if you can hear me, we'll talk about the solution later on. But let's also review the issue critically. Uh, let me quickly play you the video. It's unfortunate that uh, you're on a phone call, but maybe you will get the sound. And if you have seen the video before, but let our viewers have the benefit of taking a look at the video clip. Let's quickly take a look. Shot shooting at our people. We have come to see the commissioner of police. He has seen the evidence. Over 20 vehicles were destroyed. Windscreen, windshield. Thank God we were not in the vehicle because we were right inside the Lobas Palace. And they shot at it. And we have evidence here. And uh, it will get to a point that we call on our people to defend themselves. We do not want any blood to be shed. But we call on our people in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening. Ah, see, to all those who are doing campaign, all doing campaign, Sherry, Sherry, I can't do this. Sherry, Bobo, what do you say? To come up with something, don't, 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 uh, in clear terms, the governor. Uh, let me quickly get your take on this. Uh, Alex, does it really change your position or what exactly are you saying 
about that video clip? The person that did the recording and sent it must either be a member, a card carry member of PDP, or somebody who has solid sympathy okay. for the PDP. Okay. The truth is that they launched attack on our members and vehicles that are branded Aketi. And uh, some sympathizers with the APC and maybe some passersby, they try to resist this. But as I said before, the APC, we have talked to our people over and over again that you don't win an election by resorting to talking or promoting violence. Okay, thank you so much. I, I think uh, that was quite uh, sincere enough. But let me get uh, Mr. Ufeli to react to this. Uh, what do you make out of this? Looking at what INEC will always advise and the police that do not have your rallies at the same venue on the same day. That seems to be the point they made. But should that result to that kind of attack? Mm -hmm. Well, from what he said just now, I think it appears to me that like he turned the issue on his head because from the sound bites and the, the pictorial evidence, that I'm seeing or that I saw in that video is uh, you have uh, the convoy of the PDP. I mean, we see the. Can you we please saw, project so that I can hear you very well? We saw we saw the inscriptions on uh, the PDP convoy and all that. So campaign team. So what he's saying that the the PDP campaign team went to block them and all that, and then uh, you know he's started like shooting them. Attack. Yes, yeah, so they went to block them and shit. But it, that's different actually from what we're seeing because uh, what we have is uh, uh, the uh, convoy or the campaign team of the PDP. And all. But that, that aside, um, let me look at, let me just uh, talk about the issue of uh, our, our politics that we are still fixated with this politics of bitterness, politics of uh, win it or take it or kill everyone. Uh, power is power, no matter how you procure it and all that. And these are the things that we have continuously agitated against, that we should not have a system okay, that will reduce politics to bitterness and war. Okay? Um, it is the people that will decide who will lead them. And then politicians and their supporters should allow for peace and tranquility so that the people can come out and exercise their civic responsibilities, okay? Without fear. Yeah, without fear, because what you have now, this is tension inducing. Now, the, the election is still a little bit, uh, for election is still a little bit far away. You are now already creating tension within the okay. political space. Now, um, the, 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 one of the candidates did say that uh, Amotekun is also, you know, a perpetrate one of the people behind this, and that creates the fear that a lot of people mentioned when Amotekun was to be formed. Mm -hmm. That are we sure that the governors in power will not take advantage of this? <laughs> How valid is that? Well, uh, that is an allegation because even me, when I first heard about this altercation, the first question I asked was, Where is the Amotekun? Because at this stage of campaign, the federal government have not redeployed police forces to that angle, apart from the ones that are serving in the state, okay? And maybe the ones that go around with the politicians. Okay, so one of the questions we, we, I asked is that this, uh, this uh, confrontation happening in the locality, a locality where the Amoteku is presumed to be functioning, so where are they? Are they the perpetrators or are they the ones who orchestrated this? If they are not, why didn't they make an attempt to intercept uh, the uh, altercation or to, you know, uh, wage against the likelihood of the breakdown of law and order in that locality? So this now, again, is the acid test. It's like the first acid, acid test. And the Moteco is nowhere to be found. So the questions we need to ask ourselves or to redirect our minds to is that having said Amoteku is a good idea, that it will function as uh, community policing and give us the, 
the, the long, the long that awaited we, protection that we had okay. in the first report. Uh, Mr. Feli, so sorry. Mm. I understand that uh, Alex is back. Uh, I'm, 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 I don't know whether you listened to Mr. Ufeli's submission the first time. He seems to be, he seems to disagree with your logic that uh, from the way you presented the case, that it doesn't look logical for you to say that uh, PDP should be absolved, that PDP probably uh, uh, were not the one that stopped this. I mean, APC were not the one that stopped the PDP campaign team from moving forward. Uh, how do you convince him or probably convince the viewers that APC is actually absorbed from this uh, attack? Well, I'm afraid to get up at one place now. But if the question is trying to insist that uh, the APC were the aggressors, what happened? Something like that. No. Even though Vision you didn't of. say that. You he didn't say they are the aggressors, but he's looking at the explanation you made that it doesn't look as if you know PDP should be blamed at all for carrying out their campaign and they were being shot at. Even the police even the police have told us that they were surprised that PDP were in a cocoa that same day. And uh, from their explanation, the PDP they trying to let the world know that their candidate was there to salute one of the monarchs in the area. What I said before was that we were on the way for a rally we had planned long before yesterday, and we gathered from our advancing that PDP members and supporters had blocked the way. But in our usual time, we thought we could manage the situation by ignoring whatever provocation and go ahead you have our rally. No, are you saying so, that if we have an opposition around where you are having your rally, there must be exchange of gunshots because we heard different sounds and that sound doesn't seem to come from the policemen. I'm not talking about gunshots. What I said was that there could be splishes in the area. The reason is that a party like the PDP that has knack for violence, that have patient for thuggery, they are likely to unleash, unleash attack. So the best way to avoid such sometimes is to have your campaigns, your rallies at different uh, parts of the state on each occasion. But having said that, as I said before, the APC have done so much for the people of Ondo State with these three and a half years that we don't need to agree to win election. We don't need to unleash attack on anybody. I want you to go back to the people, tell them what we've been able to do with the, ma with the mandate given to us four years ago and why we deserve their vote. Okay, let me quickly get your final comment before I come back to my guest. What do you have to say about the accusation against Amotekun? that Amotekun was also part of the people behind that attack. You know, that, that, if that is true, that confirms the fear of many that the political office holders might use Amotekun to their advantage. Again, that is a very unfortunate position. We know the efforts we put in to have Amotekun in place. Amotekun is designed to serve the state not a political party, not a political individual. So if some people who are trying to drag in Amateku to score some points, it's very unfortunate. But I can tell you that Amateku, the way it's constituted and the way they have been operating since the inauguration, they have been serving the interest of the state and not a party. Thank you so much, uh, Alex Kalejai. But uh, before you go, let's listen to Mr. Ufeli on what is the way out. If that is the situation, even to go cover the election as a journalist, you might need some kind of bulletproof. What do you think? <laughs> well, it, it boils down to the fact that we have not really evolved politically. In some areas, like in the use of technology and all that, we're evolving. But politically, we're retrogressing. Because even if you 
look at the whole structure. The Electoral Act itself prohibits this kind of uh, attitude, attitude. Out, outing and all that. But the politicians have not learned anything whatsoever. Now, this is not the election day. Why they were shooting sporadically? They were doing that at the front of a filling station. Hmm. You saw that. Hmm. That was dangerous for that community. The community, they came to a uh, campaign to, to make promises to. They were shooting guns at the front of a filling station. Somebody owns that investment. That investment is feeding people. That investment has, has, has employed people. You understand what would happen if that place, you know, is got up by fire and all that. So, I mean, our, our, our politicians and their supporters should know that um, politics is for the living. Okay, good governance is for the living. Whatever it is you think you want to do, that is your aspiration and ambition, does not work the life of any Nigerian. So we should be able to structure ourselves politically, educate the masses, because there, even, even in the, the PDP campaign convoy, I saw people on Mufti with rifles, hmm. like thugs. Hmm. In the PDP, it's the PDP now that we are here saying uh, they, uh, they are being attacked. You understand? So at the end of the day, you as an analyst cannot, cannot stand in one, on one side, side on one side of this discourse because okay. these two political parties are the same the only difference is that they they, they are one they separate during election <laughs> after the contest election I, become, i'm sure i'm sure uh, alex will not want to agree with you but thank you so, for your for your take on this issue thank you once again yeah. barrister evans ufeli and thank you once again alex kalejai for giving us your own take we hope we will have uh, uh, um, a PDP representative to join us subsequently to explain their own side of the story. Thank you once again, Alex. My pleasure. And thank you. Yeah. And to our viewers, please don't go away. We'll go on a short break, and when we return, I'll be giving you my take on this issue. Here is my take. The news of the attack on the campaign team of Ondo PDP gubernatorial candidate Eutai Ojegede is shocking, but not so. I mean, it will be the first time an event such as this is taking place. For instance, former Deputy Senate President E.K. Kweremadu in Germany was attacked by Nigerian citizens. Even if the reasons are not the same, the conclusion is the electorate are getting bolder. But in this case, is the thugs. Now the two major political parties can argue and trade blames, but that won't change anything. The fact is that what do we do to stop the violence? Why do elections have to be violence fueled in this country? I think the reason is because the greed of the leaders has pushed them into desperation. How, you might ask, the low, low standards of living among the people and then these people agree to become thugs for these same greedy leaders and take up the dirty parts of their works. But really, who is this helping? Because as I see it, no one, I mean no one, because it's definitely not helping the people. And in the long run, it is to the detriment of the leaders because one day these thugs will discover the truth and that they have been used and dumped and will embark on a journey of vengeance on the leaders and their offsprings. Solutions. Less disease from violence, their youths and young people across the country. Remember who you are, the sons and daughters of great Nigeria, and live out that greatness in dignity. Even the Holy Bible says, do not let anyone despise their youths. Don't give politicians and power-hungry individuals that chance. Elections should be a time citizens look forward to because it gives them a chance to choose their leaders, not because they will make little money from the candidates. It also shouldn't be a time where everyone is scared to leave their houses because political parties are fighting fire for fire, as we say in our local parlance. I hope that my take will get us thinking and put us, really, our thinking cap. 
That's how far we can go today on Plus Politics. Plus Politics returns tomorrow, where we'll give you a bumper edition. I remain yours truly, Coyote Ladeini, saying bye for now. <laughs>